أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم يا أيها الذين آمنوا كتب عليكم الصيام كما كتب على الذين من قبلكم لعلكم تتقون أشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد وبارك وسلم إنك حميد مجيد والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Listeners at home, today's episode of our lecture is Adopting the Moral Quality of Truthfulness. Truthfulness is good in all. And that's why Allah encourages in the Holy Quran, chapter 9, verse 120. Meaning, O ye who believe, fear Allah and be with the truthful ones. Meaning, a life without God is meaningless. A soul that fails to recognize its creator is a ruined soul that has failed its purpose. Allah says in the Holy Quran about the real essence of creation of man. In Surah Adariyat, verse 57, Allah says, وَمَا خَلَقَتُ الْجِنَّ وَالْإِنسِ إِلَّا لِيَعْبُدُونَ That is, I have only created genes and men that they may worship me. This verse has indicated that we have just one purpose in life, and that's the attaining of Allah's prayer through obedience and worship. What's worship? That is ibadah. Let's examine this. Ibadah in Islamic teachings is not only about praying, fasting, going to perform Hajj and other pillars of Islam. Rather, ibadah is majorly classified into two. One, the one between you and God. And the other aspect is mu'amala, that is your relationship with other creatures of Allah. The first type consists of prayer, fasting, hajj, and other religious duties between you and Allah. While the second type is about the way you deal with fellow human beings, that is creatures of Allah. Without the balancing between the two, the ibadah is never complete. Speaking truth is under these two classifications. Being sincere to God and men. Failing in this duty is detrimental to the soul development. Prophet Muhammad wasallam, said in an hadith that truth saves, falsehood destroys. This shows the importance of speaking the truth in every situation one finds himself. Now, let's examine what is the real truth. We are talking of truth. The real truth means what? The real truth is the one spoken when you have things to lose. The promised Messiah, holy founder of the Jamaat al Ahmadiyah, has explained this explicitly in his book, lecture titled, The Philosophy of Teachings of Islam. He says, and I quote, one of the natural qualities of a man is truthfulness. Normally, unless a person is moved by some selfish motive, he does not wish to tell a lie. He is averse to falsehood and is reluctant to have recourse to it. He is displeased with a person who is proved to have told a lie and looked down upon him. But this natural inclination cannot be accounted a moral quality. Even children and the insane exhibit it. Unless a person discards those purpose which leads him away from telling the truth, it cannot be considered a, truth, a, a, a truthful. If a person tells the truth where no personal interest is involved, but is ready to have recourse to a falsehood where his honor or property or life is concerned, and first to tell the truth is no better than a child or an insane person. Do not the insane a minor speak such truth? There is scarcely anyone in the world who will tell a lie without any purpose. The truth that might be abandoned in order to escape some loss that threatens is not a moral quality. Now, when you tell the truth, and hold the skills even. Though the person concerned, be your kids man or be a close relative, maintain the concept of absolute truthfulness. 
be strict in observing justice and bear witness only for the sake of Allah, even if it should occasion loss to you or your parents or your kinsmen or son, etc. This is very clear and simple definition of real truthfulness. That's why the truth spoken in difficult situations are the real truth. Now let's examine important for speaking the truth. One, speaking the truth gives you peace of mind, unlike falsehood that gives you uneasiness. In one hadith of the Holy Prophet Salam, he advised Hazrat Wasiba that consult your soul, consult your heart, O Wasiba. Righteousness is what satisfies your soul and your heart. And sin is that which withers in your soul and puts tension in your chest. Even when the people approve it in their judgments again and again, truth is part of righteousness which put mind to rest. Two, it will give you a good reputation among men in the society. When you speak the truth always, it gives people good impression about you. Many accepted the message of the Holy Prophet Muhammad wasallam, just because they knew him to be a truthful man. He was named Al-Amin, a lackable for him, that is, the trustworthy one. Hazrat Abu Bakr Siddiq, that is, Abdullah bin Qahafa, anhu, never doubted him. When he claimed to be a prophet, it was, this was because he had gained people's trust through his perpetual truthfulness. As a result of this, when you speak truth always, it gives you good reputation among men. Another advantage of speaking the truth is that it increases your rank in the sight of Allah. Abdullah bin Mas'ud reported that the Prophet Sallallahu said, truthfulness leads to piety and piety leads to Jannah. A man persists in speaking the truth till he is enrolled with Allah as a truthful. Forceful leads to vice and vice leads to fire that is leads to hell. A person persists on telling lies until he is enrolled a liar. We can as well have this advantage that is, real truthfulness saves you from difficulties. If you speak truth always, you will be safe from difficulties. For example, this may seem exaggeration, but it's not. The promised Messiah, Ali Salaam, pointed in his book titled Advents of Promised Messiah. He says, and I quote, The fact is that those who are punished for speaking the truth are not penalized because they have adhered to honesty. Rather, they are punished on account of certain other hidden vices or for having light at some other occasion. God Almighty knows of countless other sins and vices committed by such people. Their wrongdoing are so many and it is on account of one or the other that they are punished. Remember well that nothing is more unblessed than falsehood. Generally, worldly people say that those who speak the truth are arrested. But how can I agree? Seven lawsuits have been fought against me. The Prime Messiah maintained this. Can anyone point out a single in which God Almighty caused me to suffer defeat? Almighty himself defends and supports the truth. Is it possible that he should punish a righteous person? Were it so, no one on earth will dare speak the truth. A person who speaks truth can never be disgraced, for he basks in protection of Allah the Almighty. There is no fortress or citadel more secure than the protection of God Almighty. Now, let's examine how to adopt truthfulness. Number one, in adopting the moral quality of truthfulness, one just have to try to commit himself to telling the truth, regardless of the circumstances surrounding the opportunity to do otherwise. Discuss the matter with someone you trust and hold each other accountable for absolute integrity. This was the example of a Sahaba that was deep in sin. The prophet told him to leave falsehood, which he did, and he was finally freed from the remaining sins. Two, make a list and practice emphatic and apologetic phrases. Many people lie to avoid anger of people because they are afraid of the situation. Learn to calm an angry person through such techniques as acknowledging his right to be angry, apologizing, listening actively, and replying to people's dispute. Thirdly, consider the consequence of lying. Through this, you'll be immune from being a false speaker. Then, number four, if you ever promised a person and there are no alternatives at a feasible period that is to fulfill your promise. Apologize sincerely for the mistake. Lying can create a snowball of lies in which you must 
lie to cover another lie. Remember that the person may find out about the lie. If this happens, the problem will likely be compounded. In conclusion on this topic, speaking truth in difficult situation is possible only if one has firm faith in God, the Almighty. God is the only one we are to fear because he's the determiner of everything. Whether one will be saved or destroyed is determined by him. Why not adopt truthfulness for his sake? May Allah enable us to be among the truthful. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.